Hello, thanks very much for joining me and today you see a fly already tied in the vise and the reason for that is this is not my fly. This fly belongs to Del Spry who's kindly given it to me to demonstrate to use folks. Uh, obviously we did quite well on the International Grayling Festival recently and uh, people were asking about what patterns we use so my teammates, the veterans, have um, all chipped in and they've given me a fly each. So this week I'm going to give you Del Spry's fly. He used it as a top dropper in the competition and I'll explain a bit more how, how we fished with it as the video goes on. Um, Del's a top guy. He captained the England international team in Ireland this year and he's also a fantastic fly tire. He's just opened a guiding business up in the, the Lake District way so if you're around Cumbria and you fancy a day out with a top bloke I couldn't recommend Dell highly enough. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so in the vise is a Hanak 470 barbless hook. It's at size 14, and I've coupled that with a Hanak. 3.5 slotted tungsten bead. Now the fly Dell originally gave me, to be honest, was a size 16 and it had a 2.5 millimeter bead. But for demonstration purposes, I've decided to up the proportions so that you can see what I'm doing a bit better. The thread I'm going to be using today is the ultimate tie on, sorry, the ultimate tying silk, and this is uh, the steel grey one. As with these threads, same as the Vivas. Before I start, I'm going to just add the tiniest bit of super glue at the shank off my hook and work that up the shank. Catch in at the bead, and I always like to build just enough of a ramp to keep the bead in place. I don't like that shaking about while I'm tying. Some, some tires I know don't mind it, but um, it just gets on my nerves, so I like to keep it pinned back and out the way. Remove your waist. Now this fly, as you've seen, has uh, two tails. So I'm going to be using Glow Bright number six, and it's a nice vibrant orange color. I've already taken a strand off the bobbin, and what I want to do is fold it in half and in half again. Now what that, this does is it gives me four strands all together to create my tail. So I'm going to come back up to the top, capture that in, and then once I've got it secure, I'm going to pull it tightly to make sure none of the edges are escaping out, escaping out, should I say. And I've caught that in there. Now I want the, the orange tail to about about two eighths of an inch. And I'll just cut that there like so. The next piece of tailing then is actually Cock de Leon. And you can see I've got a little feather here and I'm gonna take approximately half a dozen fibers from the stem. And I want that to protrude about an eighth of an inch past my orange tail. I'm just gonna pinch that up so I can see what I'm doing. I'm happy with the length, so I can come back and pin that down in place. Next thing then, I can remove my excess materials and just tidy this all up. Now what I want to do here actually is build a nice taper into my body. So I'm just going to work away at that. It might take a minute or so, so bear with me. Now as I said, when we uh, fished with this on the D, it was generally in a smaller size and it was fished as a top dropper fly. And we fished with a, a much heavier fly on the point. But even at size 14, I dare say this will be an effective fly. So the body then, what I'm going to be using is some uh, stripped peacock herald. 
you can see here I'm using the Polish quills um, I'm really impressed with these they, 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 uh, they work straight out of the packet there's no soaking them there's no using Vaseline or whatever you might have heard other guys do to get the strip quills to work this is just does what it says in the tin comes out the packet and works a treat so I've got it here I've trimmed away any little bits of waste at the top and I'm going to capture that end on my side nice and gently initially and then again I can help myself just putting a few more wraps in to build that taper I brought my, my thread to the seat of my bead now um, that's just to keep it out of the way while I bring my strip peacock herl up now as always we're working with strip peacock herl it can be an adventure so be prepared for tears it's quite a delicate material and it needs a lot of TLC so I'm going to just as gently as I can get it started I'm trying not to put any weight on my hackle pliers so all I'm doing really is guiding the herald around the shank of the hook there's no pressure whatsoever coming through the hackle pliers I'm taking great care as I get near the point of the hook because the last thing I want is to catch the point and damage damage the herald um, because once it's had a little bit of trauma it will just collapse on you so just take your time and make sure you're not crying into your giant pillar because the fibers kept on springing back at you once it's at the bead you can just capture that in with a couple of turns of thread and bring it over and I'm pretty convinced that when I pull this now it's just going to come away and it's not going to spring back on me so fairly happy with that now there was a couple of things I could have done here to help protect this stripped herald I could have put some super glue on the shank and brought the herald up through it left it to dry but on this occasion I'm simply going to use some UV resin this is the Solaris bone dry and I don't want an awful lot of UV just enough as to offer the quill protection against rocky bottoms in the river and of course uh, if you're fishing for brown trout their little teeth can make short work of uh, herald so this does the whole whole nine yards so I'm just going to cure that off now as I said before um, Dell's a fantastic angler and um, if this is good enough for his fly box it's certainly good enough for mine that aside my team captain uh, Graham Lumsden would insist that we all have the same patterns so I have um, endeavoured to fill my box with different sizes of these of late now the, the thorax um, they, they would have been squirrel dubbing originally I'm going to use some of the trout stalkers uh, scruffy dubbing uh, I use this on most of my uh, flies that require squirrel and I've taken a little bit out the packet already and I'm just going to dub that on it doesn't need much and I'm going to work it back and then forward again now it doesn't look like a huge thorax and it isn't it, you know the, the thorax isn't a big area on this fly and it was one of the things that struck me actually when Dell gave me it how small this section is but what there is a CDC collar and uh, I'm going to use some of the ultra select CDC from Troutline and I've already taken uh, a feather out the packet now uh, they're lovely huge feathers this and I don't really need this kind of volume in my feather so what I'm going to do is bring in my clip and I'm going to take maybe half 
half the length of the feather and I'll just try and do this on camera like so now I'll keep this piece because I can probably get another uh, three flies out of it so I'll put that to the side for later and I've caught in what I require for this fly in my little clip here next thing there's a couple of things you can do you can make a dubbin loop now I don't generally do it I think it's a waste of time but if you want to make a dubbin loop just do that with your fingers catch it a few turns and you've created a loop but when you use um, the the ultimate tying silk and vivas what you can do is just split the thread and that's what I tend to do with most of my flies so I'm going to come in behind with my needle flatten out my thread and just create a dubbin loop like so I can then insert that into my thread and before I do anything else I'm just going to spin that up now already looking at this I think I may have too much CDC but I'll see how I get on I can always thin it out once it's finished so after each turn slick the fibers back so there's one two and the last one perfect and then just a couple of turns to finish off now once you've done that you can start playing about with the fibers if you like and I'm just want to shorten mine ever so slightly not much because uh, the fly that I was given it had some real long pieces of CDC coming out the back of it there like this now what I'm going to do to finish off I'm going to use a little bit of UV resin you can use super glue at this point if you wish but I like the resin especially with CDC around you don't want super glue and CDC mixing they don't like each other pull everything back out the way capture that in now if you can use a whip finish tool good for you get it out now and crack on if you can't a couple of half hitches cure off your um, resin and there you go now in the smaller sizes uh, we used this as a dropper and it was it was really effective i don't think we had it off our cast actually uh, so thanks thanks to dell for that and uh, i've now shared it with you i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you next time if you haven't subscribed please do so now there'll be a new video every week wednesdays and fridays thanks for watching if you want to make them up that's how to do it.